Welcome back to the Happy Time Podcast. I am Flames Kid. I'm Lena. And I am Chris Cass. And this is how it shits on every single time. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, today, we're going to be reviewing Wiley Roots Brewing Company. And let's start off with the cracking, guys. And that's pretty everywhere. Yep. So that's what he said. <clears throat> to start us off, I will be drinking their uh, Cerveza flavored beer. That's what it's called, literally. Um, which is a Mexican style lager with four point eight alcohol by volume. How about you guys? I am having the cherry limeade. It's a slush or cherry lim- limeade slush. It's a sour ale with cherries and limes. This is trying to take a look. A five point five alcohol by volume. And that's just about all it says. <laughs> what about you, Chris Cass? I am having a beer flavored beer. That is a German style Helles Lager. Hairless? Helles. Oh, okay. Lager. With natural beer flavor. I don't know what that means. (laughs) (laughs) It is 4.8 alcohol by volume. And it is uniquely crafted. Nice. Yeah. Wait, they're in Colorado? Yes, sir. Wow. So, before we jump into the actual brewery. um, Ah, man. In beer we trust. In beer we trust. It says it on my cans. Does it say it on your cans? I no. uh, I think it probably does. Oh, sweet. Well, mine has a little shield. Well, it's funny because these cans are kind of like, well, at least mine's and, and Chris Cass's is kind of themed. They're styled. So, so my can kind of resembles a Modelo can, if you or like a Modelo bottle, the color scheme and the yeah. you know, and his kind of resembles a Budweiser. But that doesn't <laughs> does. make any sense because Budweiser, I think is a. Well, actually, I think they're in America. American? They're they American. Are. No, I know they're American. It's a German but name, but it's Maybe American. they're made from, like, German roots. It's a German word. Budweiser is a German word. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Weiser. It's funny because on their website, they have this exact same beer bowl with lime. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at their beers, like, uh, what they like offer the in the tap room. Oh, <sighs> yeah. That doesn't get old. Good. doesn't get old. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, guys, Um, before we kind of, like, Jump into the mix with the Wiley Roots and stuff. Uh, what have you guys been up to? Start us off with your week, Flames Kid. Uh, I guess I'll start off then. Um, you know, same old, same old. I don't want to bore you guys with the same details of work and stuff. Um, but we did do a lot of uh, a lot of walking on uh, Wednesday. You sure did. Um, a lot of uh, Disney walking. Um, that was fun. I was very tired the next day at work. Um, I didn't even want to work, to be honest should have asked for two days off that sounds like me every day of the week <laughs> <laughs> um but um yeah i mean it wasn't it wasn't anything crazy you know congratulations to lena's little brother crystal uh, light crystal light uh for graduating or for for culminating from uh eighth grade and moving on to ninth grade so he's a high schooler now no he's not <laughs> not yet uh same thing goes to the graduating class of 2022 congratulations guys uh we know is a uh you know it's hard out here for a pimp <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh what else uh he did play his last baseball game as well um yes, last weekend and an unfortunate turn of events unfortunately they lost yeah hey it was based off of a technicality the, the um, I it mean, was it was just like it is what it is but it honestly is just unfortunate you know like it was like super unfortunate at least it wasn't a blowout like yeah. it was so close. Yeah, it was a good game, honestly. It like I kind of wanted to see it play game. out, and the only reason I'm mad at the ump was because he caught that balk, and he knew calling that balk would end the game. Yeah. So and which yeah. So, I think they wanted because they were already exactly going that, way over yeah, the time. Yeah. So yeah, they were just looking for any excuse. And I mean, throughout the game, I mean, the ump was calling a bunch of balks on the other team. Yeah. So for him to kind of return it at the end to us, I mean, realistically, it was all but fair, you know. I mean, like like I said, the only thing that, get, was, that gets me mad is I know for a fact that they called that Bach to end it. To end it, they knew it because it was that it was okay. We're 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 talking about 
what happened at the game without really giving any details. So yeah, uh, at uh, at Crystal Lights game or Matthias, however we call them, uh, my little brother's game. They were down. What was the score? They were down by two. No, 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 no. they were down. They were down. They were down by like four or five. Four or five. And they came back. They. It was like I want to say nine four maybe. Something like that. Yeah. Something close to that. And next thing you know, like these kids are just getting hits and. And I guess uh, the other team had, like, a, a pitcher that wasn't so uh, great. And so we got a couple of walks, and that helped us, like, get on base. And they came in. So we ended up kind of catching up. And uh, we tied the score. Uh, and that was basically at the end. But because we were the guest of the game, technically, um, we were tied at 10 and 10. So... We needed to make sure that they were able to, um, they were able to bat, but it, it was technically supposed to end at two o'clock because the next game started at two 30 and they needed to clean the field and repaint and, you know, just fix everything up. So we were, it was already like two 15 when the ump called that last balk when, uh, we were on the field and the other team was batting. And yes, as Chris Cass mentioned, ump knew that calling out that buck whether it was for real or not i didn't get to see it honestly i wasn't looking at at the picture at that time but if he called it or not um that was the game ending run there was someone on third having him come home ended the game so whether i don't know there there was something going on in the field where the one of the coaches uh the coach for my brother's team was talking to the president of the field to clarify what the rules and regulations regarding the situation that was happening. Um, so I was distracted listening to that when when the ump was like, you know what, we're out of time, so I'm going to just continue the game. And then that's when he, like right after that, he called the buck. So I don't know if it was for or not. I wasn't looking at the picture at the time. But it was so unfortunate. It was such a good game. They came back big, and it was awesome. So I'm just still proud of them either way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, it it was a good game. Definitely yeah. had us on our on our toes for the most part. Um, yeah, you know, it's 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 been it's been a pretty busy week. Um, you know, we got to build lightsabers, which was uh, expensive. Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> but very but but very fun. Um, it was a good experience. Um, you know, that, I, that honestly completed my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted a lightsaber, and I've always, and like just the fact that you got the experience to build one is just extra. Yeah, yeah. but these actually feel like good, like you know, well, they are they good were quality very, lightsabers. They were very expensive. Yeah, I hope the, so. And then I don't know if I mentioned this on any other podcast uh, previous to this one, but I did buy a very expensive camera, and I did try it out at Disney. That was like my first time actually playing with it all day, yeah. and I took some pretty good pictures for the most part. Um, obviously they need a little bit of editing, you know, a little touch here and there, but all the pictures I took on the camera were actually pretty well, great. I think we all took pictures on that camera. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. all having fun with it. I mean, that was the point of it. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. So we went to Disneyland for Matthew's graduation and, um, God is Disneyland just the best and the worst. Like it's so bittersweet to be able to go. But one, it's so crowded, and that's with it being limited to reservation. And um, it's eh, they have, like, Genie Plus, or Genie for regular people, like, who don't want to pay for it. And then there's Genie Plus. And then, like... So what's the difference? I still don't know what the difference so is. So Genie Plus gives you a little bit more benefits, like you get the pictures... Um, you get to uh, reserve other attractions. So that's basically the top tiers, though. Yeah, basically. Mm. And, I mean, it, it, it was beneficial at first when we first got there because we were able to reserve, you know, top rides really quick yeah. and avoid the long lines early on. But as it progressed through the day, it seems to not really do much right? because all the, the rides re- for to reserve were, like, yeah. late in the day. So, yes, you could reserve, for example, like, I'll give you an example, like, um, we could have reserved Hyperspace Mountain at 12, but the reservation wasn't going to be till 5. Yeah. So you would have had to wait until 5 to re- reuse the Genie Plus thing. And if I remember correctly, at 5, you couldn't really get anything else. Right. Yeah. Everything at that point was already like no more reservations available yeah, or, it, or it was time slot of 940 at night. Yeah. And, and I mean, I get it. It's part of like their scheme of like, 
getting you to pay for extras that I mean they were free before. Um, yeah. You know, it's just it's a like weird. the fast pass that they you stick the ticket in and it gives you an extra ticket and yeah. you have to be back at a certain it, time. It's typical Disneyland, man. It's just them trying to find another way to squeeze more money out of people. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no. That's not even the worst part. So we paid twenty bucks a person additionally to the ticket that was already like two hundred ish bucks, and there were still like what two rides rise of the resistance yeah so so one from each park springs yeah Yeah, so radiator springs was one of them on in california adventure where you had to pay an extra 15 bucks uh to skip the line which is ridiculous because i get it you know it it is it is a uh almost a two-hour wait for radiator springs and and i completely understand people's frustration and you know uh like we were when we were there we were talking about oh well i'm willing to pay it you know who cares because you're not you don't want to wait that long in the line yeah but it's it's crazy because we passed by Rise of the Resistance. And the line is... The line was huge. It was the line kinda, is ridiculous. It was, like, kind of just forming in nowhere. Like, it was, it was, it was so long that they didn't even have rope to, like, adjust No, no, no. It. It, was, it was branching off so bad that it was kind of, like, uh, in the bleeding way. into... No, no. It was bleeding into Frontierland. Yeah, it was. So it was, it was, it was fucking crazy. Like, I mean, I get in for, for Rise of the Resistance, the pay is 20 bucks. Well, right. I mean... I mean, the realistically speaking, Rise of the Resistance is kind of like a 15-minute experience. It's not even a ride. I wouldn't even call it an attraction. I mean, it it is a ride, obviously, but it's more of an experience because they have you, they have you going through like a bunch of stuff. You know, it's not just you're in the line, you get on the on the on the ride, and then you're off. Like, no, it's like yeah. you get on, you you go in, you're like with a group of people. And then they take you through like this whole experience where you're basically like captured or whatever, and the and the first order is like you know telling you to do like these things, and basically the the, the ride is based on you escaping from a base that the, the you know first order is running. That's that's basically the ride. Yeah, so, uh, so I wouldn't know. I've never experience. been on it, but I'll take <laughs> I, your word I, for it. I have videos of it, like very clear videos. I mean, I'll take your word for it, but th- think about it. We did. We used our fast pass for yeah. the millenn. But- <laughs> The, the, Millennium Falcon. Millennium the Falcon. smugglers run, yeah. Yeah. I'm a la, la, la Falcon. La, 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 la. <laughs> wow, is this beer already getting to me? No, it was that shot of Jameson. Anyways, yeah. so we we did it for that, and that's technically an experience. You're getting in a so-called ship. One person is assigned to duty, and you're actually you're all... six people are assigned duties. Dead. Each person is assigned to duty, <laughs> and Dead duty. as I said. A duty, and they're doing something, whether they're a pilot, a gunner, or an engineer. So, yeah. like, that's part of an experience too. And that that didn't charge, but I just feel like you're already paying an additional twenty dollars per person, yeah. and for each ride, they want to charge an, another fifteen for radiators. Radiators. Radiator springs. Red, 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 red springs. I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> or for twenty dollars for Rise of the Resistance, and that's per person. Like that's insane. It's it's just part of their scheme, dude. Like I was telling Lena when we were on site, um, you know, back in 2015, I paid like 150 bucks for a hopper ticket. Yeah. This time around, it was like 214. Like, yes, I understand inflation, um, you know, all these all these changes into the economy. I get that, I get that. But damn, that sixty dollar difference in six years. Yeah, Basically. it's not just sixty dollars. Like you also play for Genie Plus, which is another 20, yeah. 20 bucks. You said on top of that. Well, that's, yeah, that bucks. was included in the. 200 right yeah and the two oh, in the 214 included. you get genie plus yeah and you got the, the hopper ticket oh, okay. but even then man it's, it's just expensive yeah um but yeah i mean it was fun don't get me wrong like it was fun to be able to experience uh uh star wars star wars uh disneyland as an adult um and be able to like comfortably uh afford these things because sometimes like when we were when i was younger and we would go like it would suck to go out there and like you know you see all these people like enjoying like you know, some the food, food and stuff. Food and stuff, and you couldn't really enjoy it because obviously you didn't have the money. We barely had money for the damn passes, like you know. Um, so to be able to actually fully enjoy it was actually fun. But if you tell me, like, is it worth the price? Uh, you kind of, I'm kind of on the verge, you know. Well, no. part of our time was taken away due to an awesome experience that I got to witness, but these guys actually got to do. So you guys were able to actually build your lightsaber. So yeah. tell us about it. Uh, it was fun. I mean, you know, they present you. So basically, for those that have never uh, done it or, you know, don't care about it or wondered about it. Um, basically, when you get on site, they check you in um, and they give you a selection um, for you to pick. 
Based on your selection, you get a pin. And once you're inside uh, uh, for the experience, the pin kind of like designates what kind of a lightsaber you get to build. Um, so, you know, we all picked one. It was me, uh, Chris Cass, and Crystal Light. Um, and we all built our lightsabers. And all of us were different, actually. We didn't pick the same one, so that was cool. Um, but what what is it re- what does it um refer to? Uh, it depends on 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 the kind of lightsaber you can build, like the right. like the the hilt. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was cool. It was a cool experience. The whole the whole shebang. Um, we got to build obviously each our lightsaber. And the funny thing is, mm-hmm. they sell the kyber crystals in a store outside uh, in a, in a separate shop. So it was cool to basically buy the ky- kyber crystal and switch up the colors. Yeah, you can always adjust it. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's say you pick one during the experience, and then you're like, damn, I, I chose got wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. or maybe the the choice that you wanted wasn't available. Available. Yeah, yeah like, like, like a lot of people it. wanted the, the violet one. A lot of people wanted it. Well, it was not even it. available. Yeah. No, I know, I know, I know. Oh. Yeah, and, and I'm saying a lot of people, because I heard a lot of people ask for it. Like, yeah. oh, do you guys have the violet? And like, no, we don't have it. So it's kind of crazy for, for people to think that, you know, that that's not there. Yeah, I would have liked to have the purple one. Yeah. I, I probably will go back and do it myself. Should but you should. It's I, a, I'm glad I didn't get to do it because I was able to at least try and grab the moment for you guys trying to take pictures and videos of the moment because it was really cool. Um, it, it's pretty quick. I think we waited longer than it actually was. Yeah, I, I think I think it happened really quick. Um, yeah. I think it was. Uh, like they rush you to like build it. Yeah, I mean. It, it, yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, I mean, honestly, it's it's not that great of an experience. And then it's like, if you take the time to explain it to some people, some people don't get it. And I understand it's like you're trying to accommodate for them, like, or you should accommodate for them. But I mean, think about it, man. You have all these people that want to build a lightsaber in a day. True. You know, if I don't, I didn't, I honestly didn't mind that the whole experience was rushed because I agree with you guys. I I do believe that the experience is rushed. But I don't mind the dude. It's like you got to think about all these people that want to come in. They want to build a, uh, a lightsaber. And then you also got to think about the person that's freaking doing this. Yeah. It's like how long do you really want to spend with these people? Like I don't. Want, I wouldn't want to fucking spend a lot of time with these people. However, you're paying a pretty penny for this experience. Yeah. So don't, but- don't, don't think it's like, you know, something quick and easy, whatever. It. I know that the material matters. Uh, and it's great material. Like I'm, I'm really glad that it's not just plastic. Like yeah. that would suck. So you know the the hilt is metal. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's heavy. It, it's really heavy. It's great material. But I'm just saying, like overall, you're paying for the the experience to build it, which you got. But like they barely even gave you anything good at the end. But I, I guess I see both sides. Like it's Disney. They're trying to make their money, so they're they're trying to be able to sell it and. Uh, have you guys do the experience get you out it's like i said man disney just finds any (laughs) sort of way to squeeze the money out of people hey guys hey guys (laughs) and that's one of them the thing is actually pretty cool man yeah i I, I gotta admit it's really nice it's very neat i liked it and then they also give you a bag to store it in mostly because they don't want you playing with it at the park (laughs) they don't want you swinging well the the kids it's it's mostly kids i mean adults get it but but it's the kids that wouldn't You're be You're the worst one. If you didn't have it, you would be playing with it more oh, than kids, of course. probably. Of course, but I mean, we don't tell that to people. Honestly, I, I would have tested. I would probably exactly, be doing the same exactly. Thing. Yeah. I'd just be turning it off, swinging it around. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But I mean, like I said, I get it. Disney wants you in and, and out. So, uh, sorry. I, I don't go ahead. No, go one. ahead. Go ahead. A quick fact uh, Do you guys know how the sound for the lights area was made? I don't. It was basically made by taking a microphone and then. Uh, I forgot what else and swinging it by a, a old tube TV. Huh, I think it was a magnet. I'm not 100% sure. But you take it like a magnet, you get the microphone, and it's basically kind of like the feedback that you get when you pass yeah. it over. It's like, interesting. Vroom. <laughs> really? Vroom. Yeah. It yeah. reminds me of the Doppler effect, the way you're listening to it, where it's like the like kind of like a, a siren or a train passing by you. And oh, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it reminds me of it's that. funny. You guys are mentioning the sound of the lightsaber. So I was watching... Uh, a uh, little, t- I guess it was a TikTok. I'm not sure if it was a TikTok or an Instagram video, but it was a uh, Hayden Christensen, which is uh, Anakin Skywalker in the one, two, three, and Obi Wan Kenobi shows. Um, but he was in all. Th- he he was the, he was actually the little kid too. No, that was a different kid. Oh, then why did you say one, two, three? Oh shoot, 
two, yeah. three, and Kenobi. Then sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was gonna say he's actually the little kid. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. But oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, I don't think he grew up that two, fast. Yeah, exactly. It's two, three, and Kenobi then. Um, and he said that uh, he, you know, because he started at a young age with the with the series. Um, it it was weird for him not to do the whoosh whoosh like the the sounds for the lightsaber. Yeah. So even in like even in 2022 when you know when he was doing like I guess it was like a press uh press release and he was talking about like the show and stuff. He goes like it was weird for him not to do the lightsaber sounds. So um for those that haven't watched and I'm sorry I'm doing a lot of spoilers here but um Obi Wan Kenobi features uh what's his name fuck what's his name what's what's the actor's name. Oh, Ewan, Ewan McGregor. Isn't um, it Ewan? I have no idea how to I pronounce that. I think it's that. Ewan McGregor. I think. Don't quote uh, me. I, I can't. I can't say yes or no to that. But um, McGregor. <laughs> Connor. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Um, and and Hayden Christensen reprised their roles as Obi Wan Kenobi and um, Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader, respectively. Um, and it's a good show. I mean, we we caught up to Boba Fett during this last week. We did. Um, which was fucking. We, we saw a lot of Star Wars, man. Yeah, we literally watched uh the recent Obi Wan episode like like an hour, an hour ago, two yeah. hours ago. Yeah, yeah before we recorded. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I I felt like Boba Fett was really rushed, and I felt like it was more Mandalorian towards yeah, the end yeah. than Boba Fett. Yeah. I see why um, people hated it. I still like the show personally, but I see why people. I mean, we're, we're, like we're it. fans, and we're gonna like whatever they <laughs> whatever they produce. But we we'll always find a way. Yeah, this but is way. this is the way. But I felt like it was very Mando heavy at the end. Yeah, and and I mean, I I understand yeah, why they, they took like two three episodes away. From uh, like both I of said, them. this is Disney juicing more money out of and people. and I get it. I get it. I mean, Mandalorian was a huge hit. You know, Grogu, Grogu was the biggest fucking hit. Grogu, man. Mandalorian He's... wouldn't be what it is without Grogu, honestly. Yeah, yeah Grogu was the shit. That's why I collect all the pops. Anyways, seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I felt like it was very Mandalorian heavy towards the end, which is a good and bad thing because, you know, we want to make sure, you know, if you're Disney, you want to make sure that the fans are still kind of like remembering Mandalorian. You want to make sure Grogu is OK. You want to make sure there's always a way to squeeze more money out of people. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then literally after that, we got Obi-Wan, which honestly, I felt like it was a slow start because I'm like, dude, like, do I really want to know Obi-Wan's stories? Like, I know. what. Yeah, I, I do. But but somebody fill me in. But since since the release of episode three. Um, we've had the Clone Wars. We've had um, other shows that kind of had like filled in the gaps. That's uh, the only thing I don't like about it. They're kind of overloading that fucking gap. Dude. It's yeah. like so yeah. many things happened. It's like hot. Instead of progressing a, the story, they're really just trying to pack in all the details. Yeah, dude, well, it's like pick a different freaking well, set of movies to well, do things. Well, between. they expanded a lot um, in the Clone Wars with Ahsoka and, and Anakin. And if they don't show her in the Obi-Wan show... I don't that, know, man. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like between one and between one and two, like so much had already happened, and then they go ahead and they put in the Clone Wars, and it's just like, okay, so where does he? Where does the Clone Wars? Oh, for me in my head, you know, I'm pretty sure it's already been established, but in my head, it's just like, where does the Clone Wars fit in between the Council telling him, hey, you're not ready to be a master, and hey, let's give you a Padawan. It's before, but that. you're not a master. It's before that, so. So the Clone Wars takes place between two and three. Yeah. So it's before he even this, you know, he wants to become a master. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's besides the point, you know. Like, like you know, they're 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 trying to jam pack a lot of things in between certain time frames, yeah. and it's like, dude, like we already know that Darth Vader lives. We already know he kills Obi Wan in Episode Four. It's like, how much more can you tell? And yes, maybe we get Luke and Leia. Maybe we get some stories in between that. But I mean, how much more can you tell? I mean, granted, it's, it, it's a couple of years that have passed since yeah. you know all that crap happened. Excuse me, but still, man, it's like, how much can you literally cram into those years? You know what it is? It's Disney trying to milk more money, <laughs> and you know why I exactly. say that? It's because the I way the movies like were times. released were four, five, six, one, two, three. And those hit different generations because of how far apart the movies were released. Even seven, eight, nine. Exactly. No, no, no. I know. But to get people to go back and watch four, five, six, what do they have to do? They have to bring in information, details, 
uh, about the the stories. So so people might want to watch Mandalorian or Boba Fett maybe and see like where stuff is happening. I think more Obi Wan is gonna make them want to go back and see what's going on between four, five, and six. So it just allows them like let's say. Uh, someone who probably just watched one, two, and three because they were released in the times that they were growing up. Yeah, and, and they watch Boba Fett. They're gonna be lost. They're they're not gonna be completely sure what's going on. So guess what? They gotta have to go into Disney Plus and watch four, four, five, and six, and uh, that's just how you get more familiar with the story. And then uh, they're they're touching on things where like, I mean, I didn't see Clone Wars, and you guys are talking about like how more people from these shows now are related to then i i didn't know that so now i have to go back and watch it so i probably will go watch clone wars but probably shouldn't but yeah yeah i've heard good and bad things about it i heard that it's good knowledge about this like general stuff it's good boba fett knowledge i'll give you that well yeah but then um it's not completely related to like the storyline so it's it's useful but not entirely it's just good stuff to know uh, I know they touch on like how lightsabers are like no, pre-made. The, mo- and the all most that important stuff. thing to get from two is Order sixty six. Yeah, and that's that, something that's basically kind of kind of how it. Exp- you watch you watch episode two and you don't know what the fuck's going on. You watch episode three and you see what had the events that happened in episode three and right. you're like, oh, that's why they did this in two. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, but like I said, I think they're they're touching certain points just to get people to get more familiar with the story and rewatch the movies. I feel like they should kind of move on from the Skywalker saga. Either go before or after. Like I still stick to my guns and say hit the old republic. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much content, man. It's yep. just there's just so many good stories. It, it one person is like imagine imagine watching the story of a Jedi going to a fucking a Sith lord and mastering both. And then just conquering the like trying to g- conquer the galaxy like Darth Vader would, like but way back when. Hey, I'm, I'm not gonna lie though, those scenes in, in Episode Five of uh, Obi Wan Kenobi with Darth Vader, fire. Yeah, those scenes <laughs> are pretty. Good. Fire! Yeah. All the Darth Vader scenes are fire. Hey, man, spoiler alert, by the way. Hey, yeah, for real. Sh- well, yeah, should be watching it. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, we should have been watching it too, but we didn't. We waited until when it was but- four episodes in. <laughs> yeah, we caught up all in one day. I yeah. Know. <laughs> hey guys, so. Since we're, you know, a couple minutes in, uh, what are you guys thinking of your beers? Oh, yeah. A nice check-in. Beer check? Mine, as I mentioned, it's the Cherry Limeade Slush. It is a sour ale with cherries and limes. I taste cherries and limes. I feel like this beer would be a lot better if it were much colder and almost slushy-like. Okay. I think that's what it's meant for, but I think it's actually very sour I like it, but I don't think it's something I can down so quickly. Uh, I probably have more beer uh, in my can than you guys do. Um, I, I do enjoy it, though. It's it's flavorful. My beer is like, I don't even want to say it's like Modelo because it's not, but it is light as a lager and it's really good. Yeah. I'm enjoying my beer. Yeah, I might, I'd say mine would, it kind of tastes like a, a Hefeweizen. Yeah, mm. uh, not really. I mean, like, just in in the same kind of taste, like the aftertaste, I guess. Yeah, you know, it it does taste like you know something German made, and obviously this is a German style beer, so yeah. Um, all in all, you know, it's it's pretty good, man. It's smooth. I yeah, got, I got no complaints to be honest. I, yeah. I actually enjoy it a lot. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm really enjoying my beer. And and while we're on the topic of the beer, I'll give you a little about this company. Um. So, for those that don't know, or for those that follow us on Instagram, anytime we review a beer, before we even post the episode, we follow the uh, brewing company on the Instagram. And we do tag them in it. Um, so, uh, on their about page, on their website, uh, Wiley Roots Brewing Company believes beer should be unique, crafted from the highest quality ingredients, and brewed with a sense of responsibility to the craft and to the surrounding community. We believe that brewing craft beer is an art, and that it should be grounded in the core values of honesty, integrity, hard work, and the belief in one's ability to create and share. We are a small, independently owned brewery with a unique focus on mixed culture, barrel age, and spontaneous beers in downtown Greeley, Colorado. 
Our beers have been awarded medals at the Great American Beer Festival in 2018 silver, 2017 gold, 2015 gold, 2013 bronze, and 2017 silver at the Mazer Cup International. Nice. Wiley Roots Brewing Company was founded by Kyle Carbaugh and Miranda Carbaugh and opened in the summer of 2013. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to finish up these beers and move on to beer number two. All right, guys. So before we jump into beer number two, um, let's give this uh, beer a rating for the ones we were drinking. So I was having the Cerveza flavor beer. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It was smooth. It was good. I definitely would recommend this. Um, And I'm going to give it a 3.75. All right. I was having the beer flavored beer. Literally, that's what it's called. If you thought I was kidding, I am not. (laughs) (laughs) It is beer flavored beer. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Definitely smooth. Nothing, no bitterness. Nothing out of the blue. It's, it, it is what it is, bro. It, it's a lager. I think I am also gonna give it a three point seven five. It's a good pick, for sure. What about you, Lena? Well, I had the cherry cherry limeade slush, and it was good. Definitely sour, as it is a sour. I am going to give this one a three point zero. I do enjoy it. The thing is, uh, I think the sourness kind of gets to you because it's, you know, a whole pint full. Pint. Yeah. A whole pint full, as Chris Cass would say. And um, I think because we're talking and we're not kind of drinking it consistently as we're discussing, it got kind of warm. And Hey, that's on you. Yeah, that is on you. We're not telling you to how it. to drink your beer, how I'm fast to drink it. I'm not saying it was anyone's fault. I guess I let it sit a little too much and it got a little. That still, sounds better. It was a little cold when I, I mean, sorry, it was, uh, it got a little bit warm. And, and in that moment, I realized uh, it was a little too sour. So you the, said, sorry, you said 3.75? No, She's I said 3.0. 3.0. Oh, okay. Yeah. That uh, brings our average down. But I feel like because. I feel like because this uh, beer is a sour, it does taste good for what it's supposed to be. But maybe my my preference is changing. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Because I Are feel you like having a realization. I'm having a whole epiphany right now. Oh my god! Just kidding. Um, I don't know. I haven't had a sour in quite a while. I think the last one we did was Chris Cass's pick. Uh, it was like the vanilla. The one that tasted oh. like almonds and like sour. Yeah. Oh, weird ass shit. It was the weird. The one Flames Kid was, was like weird. not having it with. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was it was really sweet. And this one is definitely just flat out sh- sour. I mean, it's it's uh, cherries and limes. But yeah. I feel like this one as a slushy would be the best. I think that was my air. I probably should have put it in the freezer for a while. So. All right. Tip. If you want to try it, it is good. It's a it's a sour. I mean, be aware. But I think the colder it is, the better it will be. So All right. there's that. And with the, with that being said, we're gonna what? we're gonna move on to oh. the cracking part two. Let's go, guys. Right. I call that a one finger open because I used one finger to open it. All right. Let me give it a sip. So now I am having the beer flavored beer, Lena. I'm having cerveza flavored beer. And I'm fucked with the cherry lime and slush. <laughs> oh, BT dubs. Chris Cass is not a fan of sours, so enjoy. You, sir. you know what? Ooh. I've had multiple sours and I've realized I just don't like them. Wow. Be, it is what it is. I, I guess I just don't like sours. I know I've picked some before and that's me giving it a chance. <laughs> but as you can tell by my ratings. I probably don't like sours. Wow. Okay, the beer flavor beer is really good. It yeah. tastes like a beer. It's good. Like, it's just good. <laughs> right. It's smooth as hell. I have to interrupt, though. I was going to say something. <laughs> say something. There are five different flavor palettes, I believe. There's, like, the Oh, yeah, different places on your tongue? Uh, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I just it's meant, like, like the back of your tongue feels bitterness. The front of your tongue feels sweetness. One side feels I don't know what the heck, and the other side feels I don't know what the heck, and then 
There's another one. Scientifically, I've never been taught any of that. But that's also because I've never studied anything like that. <laughs> but uh, I was going to say just in general, there's like sweet, sour, bitter. That's why I always have to correct Flame Skid when he says something is sour when it's bitter because it's not the same thing. You know what? For the longest, I had that problem, but in Spanish. Okay. When something like amargoso means sour. And uh, I forgot the other one. What was the other one? Bitter. It's agrio. <coughs> agrio. 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 Agrio is bitter. Okay. And I had the longest problem with, the f- <laughs> with you know, kind of grasping that concept that agrio is not, you know. Completely different. It's completely different than amargoso. Right. right. Uh, the same thing is like bitterness is different from sour is basically what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. But I had the longest fucking problem in Spanish with that shit. But anyways, you were saying. I guess my point was you are big on bitter. You you're just such a bitter. Per- I'm just kidding. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just meant like typically that's you're into stouts. You like IPAs uh, a lot. You you can deal with the bitterness. You can I technically can bitter it. Too, uh, no, I don't think so. I think you're more on the bitter side. I used to be able to tolerate sours a lot easier, but it's just the the way that it hits your tongue and how your taste buds react is a little bit different than bitterness like because that's how you that you drink coffee like black like you don't put anything in it okay you're just you're more of a uh is that a bitter, bitter palate. that's bitter right yeah technically bitter or so our bitter so sorry our um warheads bitter or sour they're sour they're sour i like warheads <laughs> <laughs> i do okay but every day you drink black coffee so just pointing that out there and you're a stout guy and stouts are bitter they're not well, sour well I, I don't know i i i always i always thought having things like you know not not necessarily bitter but like stuff at their core kind of gives it more of a flavor than it does when you add like milk and sugar for example in coffee it's like the reason i drink it is because i think there's more flavor in the bitterness of the coffee that you're drinking rather than adding sugar and milk to it which kind of dilutes the the taste of the coffee huh right it's diluting the bitterness yeah yeah exactly That's and what adding I'm sweetness yeah but what i'm trying to say is like, i think i like bitter things because i think there's more flavor in it i don't know you're you're talking more about coffee yeah that yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah, apply yeah. to everything because you like eh, for a stout it's bitter not. You, you you're not you can't add anything to it to to dilute it okay well i mean there's a difference between a milk stout and just a regular stout true but a milk stout can also be bitter yeah but it's like creamy smooth i guess but yeah i, I, I know what you're talking about yeah the so I, I just meant like so palette wise everyone has their preference and th- it was very convenient when flameskid found this brewery uh, at corked um over here in bigsby knolls uh, because he was so excited to see a brewery that had, uh, I think there was, he thought at first there were three options, but there were four in the end. Two were sours, which were most likely based off of my preference. There was a Mexican style lager and a German style lager, which is uh, Chris Cass's, uh kind of like side. Cause I haven't had a sip of this, by the way. Oh, me either. I haven't had, I haven't tried this one, uh, but it was just cool because it it kind of fit everybody's uh, style in a way. Uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you tried the sour. <laughs> what do you think? It's pretty good. I thought you were gonna say something sarcastic, like it's sour. No. Yeah, but we've been talking about a bunch of nonsense. Chris Cass, catch us up. What you been up to? I've been quitting my job. Wait, actually quitting? Yeah, I get my two weeks like on last Thursday. So technically I have completed one of my weeks and next Thursday will be my last day there. Um, It's kind of crazy because uh, when I quit, they were trying to give like that same day that I put in my two weeks. Uh, they were trying to give me like an offer to stay. And uh, I kind of I kind of, you know. Honestly, in my mind, like I was just done with that place. I I can't I couldn't be there anymore, especially knowing that like, there was something better for me out there. So um, when they were telling me like, oh, like what are they paying you or why are you leaving and stuff like that, and I'm just like, well, you know, they, the pay is just whatever's, um, the work is what I like, 
and um and yeah basically have weekends off and it's like oh okay you know like is, is that what you want do you want weekends off and it's like yeah man but like you didn't have anything you there was nothing for them to offer yeah, you to yeah. really keep you i was just i was just pulling on their string because you know that's what companies do and, yeah and uh honestly the only information they were trying to get from me is where i was going and this is where it gets juicy and that's the only information that i didn't give them where i was going because you know it, it it's corporate companies like that it's like oh you know what like these guys are doing this so they try to change it up and you know you know it's it's funny that you say that because <laughs> when uh when i left okay so when i left my first plumbing company to go to my second one right uh, they questioned me. They're like, oh, where are you going? Uh, how much are you making? You know, why are you leaving? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I'm done with this place. I don't want to stay here. The same. And no, no, no. They got you, though. Well, no, 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 no. Yes, the first time. But the, the second time, But the second time I was they done. They offered you more money. So, okay. So, it. I guess I'll give a little background. So, the first time I quit my, my very first plumbing job, like actual plumbing job, um, I stayed because they're like, oh, well, why are you leaving? I was like, oh, well, money's the issue. Oh well, if money's the issue, you know we'll go ahead and uh, and guarantee Bumpy. your pay. So oh, yeah. what you know whether you sell or not, we'll pay you a certain amount. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'll take it. I was like, and I even told him, like, look, I'll try it out for a month. If I like it, I like it. If not, I'm leaving. Like, I'm not gonna stay. Okay. And for that month, everything went smooth. I was making you know more money than I had in my two years there. Yeah. But it got to a point where I was like, ah, man, this sucks. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. So I still ended up quitting. And um, again, they were trying to tell me, oh, where are you going to? What company are you going to? Um, oh, we think we, we think you're going to this. Because in, in plumbing, there's a... In a, any trade? No, 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 in plumbing. Okay. There's a huge company called Nexstar. Oh, okay, um, okay, okay. And this company is basically like... Uh, without like a network, no? Yeah, it's like a network of like other plumbing companies. So they all kind of like band together and like they kind of help each other like... Um, grow and okay. like uh, become better like at selling become better you know whatever the case may be but yeah because of that all these companies can't hire technicians from other companies within the network so if they do they have to call the other uh, owner and let them know hey like okay. I'm gonna hire you, your, your I'm gonna guy. hire your boy yeah they, so, they so, so uh, what did you say the, the organization was called next star so next star is basically like an umbrella term. It basically. covers it covers all the companies that have plumbers in that little. Y- yeah, w- but it has to be within its network. So um, yeah, that's why like an umbrella term. It, yeah. It's kind of like a business that helps you learn sales techniques. Okay. And yeah. so anyone who's assigned to them, you're kind of not allowed to like pooch on other people. Poach or poach. Sorry, poach on other people. And uh, take their employees. Yeah. So if that okay. happens because of the um, because of an uh, initiative the employee took, then the owner from the new company where the employee wants to go to has, has to, to call. Tell them. Yeah, yeah, has to call the previous employee and say, "Hey, uh, like uh, your guy wants to come here and blah, blah whatever." So by the time that you know I had to go sign paperwork, um, so you were quit, part of, you were part of that umbrella term. Well, not me. The company was the company I was working for was part of that. Oh, okay, okay. So basically, by the time I got there, they're like, "Oh, we already know you're going to this company," and I'm like, "Well, I'm haven't made my decision yet." Um, even though I had, but um, I'm like, I haven't made my decision yet. I don't know if I'm going there yet. But they already had all the details. Oh, well, we already know he pays this. We already know this. We already know that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. You know, I'm like, well, I'm still leaving. Like, nothing you can say or do is gonna make me stay. Mm-hmm. And I did leave. You know, and subsequently two other employees that ended up becoming, you know, part of my friends, um, left the company as well. And when they left, they wanted to know all the details of where the, they were going to. So they're like, Oh, well, what's, well, what are they offering you? What's the pay rate? So, so where they were going to is the place you're at now. No, no. One of them, that other job one of, that one, he was in between one of them. Yes. The other one. No. Okay. Um, but they were both asked, "Well, where are you going to? Um, how much oh, are you getting paid?" Okay. okay. They're trying to get the details. It was like harassment at that point. And 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 you know, it's funny because uh, the second guy—I'm not going to mention his name—but the second guy that left, he goes like, "Why do you want to know how much I'm getting paid? Even if you did know, you wouldn't be able to match it, like that, you know?" Yeah. And and it's crazy because, to me, is like, why do why do employers have to wait till that point to offer you everything you want? 
why can't they evaluate the situation yeah. and say, hey, you know, we, you've been working here for this long. You know, we noticed that you're a hard worker. Yeah. We noticed that, you know, you stay on track with your sales. Hey, we're going to throw this for you. This, this is the offer we're giving you. Yeah, you know? why why don't employers do that? And why is because of negligence? They yeah. don't want to pay mm. unless it's absolutely necessary well, to keep you. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing that kind of happened with me, man. It's like, you know, I was hired there, like, in September. Right. And I told them right off the bat, I told them in my interview, like, you know, my 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 goal is not to stay as an installer. Like, I want to I want to be a quote-unquote mechanic, you know? So like you know, do do jobs on cars and stuff because that's what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to learn how to do that stuff. So my boss told me like, yeah, for sure, you know, like we're we'll working out. And I told him I was like, look, no bullshit. If in a year like I'm not this, if I'm not if I'm not considered a mechanic, if I'm not doing this kind of job, like I'm done basically. And he was like, no, 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 it's fine. You know, I completely understand because honestly, Starbucks was that same bullshit. You know, they, they, they promise you like these things and stuff like that, but they took forever to go through with them. Anyways, that was that was my initial thought. So, um, you know, I, I was working there. You know, I was working my ass off and shit. And then it got to a point where we needed somebody from another store to come and help us out because I got injured. And I'm basically the only one that, you know, installs tires there. And since it's like a tire shop that's the main thing that they do you know so wait wait you guys have other locations yeah oh. this is this is a huge company oh i didn't know that okay. yeah this is a huge company um by the way uh flat tire repairs are free there so if you guys ever get a flat anywhere and just take it there and they'll do it for free we gotta say where yeah that's true but i'm telling you guys specifically <laughs> okay but uh anyways <laughs> um where was I? You were you were talking about how you got injured and they needed okay. the help from other uh, other locations. Yeah, so they pulled somebody from a different location to come and help us because you know that location is busy and they had they were not really overstaffed, but you know they had enough to spare. Okay, so they sent us somebody. Whatever. He's there. He's the same thing as me. You know, he's an installer. He takes over my job. Honestly, I was injured on the job, and I don't even know why I was at work. Like, I didn't know what my benefit was. Like, they should have just sent me home. Yeah, I um, remember that. It was kind of like they dumb. had you there to move cars around. Yeah. It, when it, they could have just paid you to stay home. Yeah, it, it was completely stupid. But, I mean, I, I understand. You know, it's a company. You got to squeeze the money you're wasting out of somewhere, right? <laughs> Anyways, whatever. Okay. So, while his time being there, he kind of, like, talks his talk, and he says, you know... I'm a mechanic. I can do this. And, you know, he, he came he came to the store with all his tools. He came with bags and bags of tools. And I was just like, all right, this guy's probably, you know, legitimate. And then uh, come to find out, like, a week, well, not a week, a day after, like, I was okay to, to fully work or whatever. Okay. They offer him a promotion. And I'm oh just like, my God. yeah. And the crazy part is he's he had only been with the company a month. So I'm just like, okay, so you're going to make him a mechanic over me knowing that that was my end game. And that kind of just started to draw the line for me in the, in the sand. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, okay, for sure. Like, I'm not mad. I, I can't be mad. at You know, the guy comes in because me, when I, when they gave me the interview, I told him like, I flat out know the basics. I don't know anything complicated when, when in reality, I kind of know a little bit. I dabble, but God, you I know, hope you know what you're doing. You've been working on my car. <laughs> it's better to say <laughs> to underplay yourself than to overplay yourself. I get it. Yourself. I get it. This guy overplayed himself. Uh, That's what I'm trying to say. You know, okay. I underplayed. He overplayed. He got the promotion over me, whatever. And he had only been with the company a month, so that kind of started drawing the line. But after a while, this this guy started, you know, botching a couple jobs here and there, which is, you know, not his fault entirely. It could have been prevented, is what I'm trying to say. Mm. But through through fault of him it wasn't and that's just the only reason i say that is because he didn't ask for help he could have just asked for help um anyways you know they started to see how they messed up or whatever and i'm just like all right cool so i started to try and help them with jobs that they needed to get done you know like oil chains and brakes like they, and they didn't want to give me any of that they just told me like oh so for example a car comes in for oil change and i have no tires to be done I try to focus on the oil change. I was like, all right, cool. So I bring the car in, whatever, blah, 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 do, do my oil change shit. And then if in the middle of the oil change, a car comes that needs four tires, they pull me off that shit and they put me on the tires. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, dude. So I'm just like, dude, I'm trying to learn you're trying to, to do this stuff. You're yeah. trying to help. You're, you're honestly just trying to help. Yeah, And they just set me back. And I'm just like, all right, you know, I'm kind of, 
I'm kind of just done. When I noticed that, I was done with the place. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So I started looking around, and I got an offer from a company. I'm not going to say its name because um, <laughs> I th- it's, it's a private company. So, you know, there's only one of them. And uh, I, I applied. I got the phone interview, and I got the in-person interview the same day. And, you know, they basically liked me, and they hired me on the spot, kind of. So they told me, like, hey, man, you know, what can you start working? And I'm just like, you know what? I haven't even quit my other job yet, so I have to give my two weeks. So, you know, in two weeks, we planned out the dates, everything, cool, whatever. Mm-hmm. So now it's – so when I give my two weeks at my job, that same day, the district manager calls me. He's like, hey, you know, like I was saying earlier, uh, where are you going? How much are they paying? Blah, right. blah, blah. And I, I kind of exaggerated what they were paying me. So I told them, you know, a, a fiction amount. And the only thing that I don't like about the job is that it's very corporate and it's more focused on sales. You know, hey, this, you know, make sure you check this or you make sure you check for that. And I don't like that. Mm. I I just flat out don't like selling jobs to people. And I didn't want to be that kind of, you know, a quote unquote mechanic. And I say that because I'm not really a mechanic because I don't know how to take apart an engine yet. But eventually soon, hopefully, whatever. Um, So, yeah. And, uh... And shit, I already lost my fucking place in my own story. Uh, you had just talked about uh, where you were talking to your company about. Uh, oh yeah, they shot me a counter offer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So they were trying to shoot me a counter offer, and I told them, you know, these are my terms. So they told me like, oh, you know what? That's fine. But the only thing that got him was the pay. And I'm j- and as soon as they told me that, I'm just like, all right, you know, you guys got nothing to offer me anymore. So I'm just done. And you know, we are where we are now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got f- four more days of work, including Monday. Woo woo. So Monday, Thursday will be my last day there. I'm kind of excited. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, m- that's been on my mind for a while now, which is why I'm bringing it up. But recently at Disneyland, I kind of met my, um, I, I guess I want to call him my idol. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it was, uh, Tom DeLong from f- former, a band member of Blink-182, co-founder of Blink-182. And, uh, dude, I don't know, man. I, I got no words to say. I couldn't even talk to the guy in my head because I had... Anything I said to the guy was basically gibberish, man, because <laughs> I was just in over my head. All right, all right. Let me set the scene. We no, are no. at... Let me set the scene because... Oh, technically, Flames I, Kid was well, the one Well, F that me, right? Out. No. But Flames okay, Kid was set, the one Set the scene and then I'll start. Set the scene. Set the scene. No, no. I'll let you take it. Okay, so I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so we're walking uh, from uh, we're walking from Paradise Pier, and we're walking into uh, the area of where the Incredit Coaster is. Okay, we had a reservation. We did, um, and we're walking down, and I'm I'm for some reason I'm always ahead of the line. I guess because I walk fast. Um, I don't know, but I was I was first, and I was walking down, walking to by the Incredit Coaster, and I see someone uh, talking to a cast member. Right. Now, see the someone has a very particular outfit. Uh uh trucker hat with a t shirt and jeans. And he's skinny jeans. And he's just like talking, talking, talking. I'm <laughs> that's like, kinda normal though. <laughs> and I'm like, wait. I look again and I'm like, wait, that's fucking Tom DeLong. I'm like, okay, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I clean my eyes because I'm I'm fucking like what? starstruck and i see him and i'm like that's tom DeLong." so i rush back like literally rush back to where uh, lena and my brother were walking by because they were walking a little bit slow excuse me <laughs> and um, i'm like dude, 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 dude that's fucking tom DeLong over he there. literally ran to us and was like yeah. dude you won't believe who's here it's tom DeLong." <laughs> yeah that was fucking insane and chris then, cass was like no <laughs> yeah so i'm like dude you have to go talk to him and I mean, he's like, fuck it, let's go. So he goes over there, talks to him. I don't know what the fuck he said to him. And I'm like, I'll take a picture. And then as soon as I'm done taking the picture, he goes like, dude, you got to post it and tag me. And then I'm like, you got to, dude, for sure. Those were literally my only words to Tom DeLong. <laughs> but honestly, dude, it was it was good because one, I see, I could have taken a picture too, but I, I didn't want to cause a scene. Um, The guy's there with his family um, or with his wife. Um, you know, they already get enough um attention from people it's like i didn't want to draw more attention to them you know and you know chris has you know obviously likes tom DeLong and likes big one two and angels and airwaves and huge stuff. fan huge fan so you know i'd I rather have him take the spotlight than and me trying to than me trying to like 
jump in there like oh take a picture with me too yeah i was like i don't care dude like i got to meet the guy that's all that matters i took the picture it's on my phone so (laughs) i don't care like it's cool um but it was a good experience definitely like the dude's cool as hell like he's so nice the fact that he was willing to take a picture with you was you know it was uh, all that mattered honestly he didn't even have to no yeah he he could have said no i'm sorry not right now because because i feel like it would have drawn attention if he if people would have saw that he was taking a picture with you yeah and he could have easily just said no no sorry I'm yeah he could he could have easily said that and or I'm or called his guard i mean the cast member to guard. say like leave him alone yeah and, and the fact that like when he took a picture he was like throwing up like yeah you know, and then he told a, he a, told a, you guys a, a, a tag me like that's so cool yeah that dude's cool man so you know yeah, shout out to tom the long you know you're amazing dude uh, we've seen you live many times. Recently, too. No? Many times. Yeah. Uh, we've seen them live once, dude. No? No. We s- oh, no. We've, we've seen, seen like AVA twice. Times. I'm thinking about, like, Blink-182. No, seen no, them no, once. We we, I've seen, we've seen them once in Blink-182. But, but twice of, in AVA. Yeah, twice in AVA. Yeah. So multiple, uh, yeah, multiple three times. Three times. <laughs> oh, Flames Kid has it three times. <laughs> hey, F you. <laughs> I, uh, I also ruined your experience, and I apologize. Why? When oh. I passed out, it doesn't matter at all. You missed like a, you missed just, like two just, songs. Just don't do it again. <laughs> it's not my, it was not my intention and not my again. plan. Just don't do it again. And you're all is good. All, all, all is good. All right, sorry, Chris. Guess we all cut you off trying to explain the scenario. No, I mean, it's well, fine, I mean, he man. got it. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was uh, an experience for all. You know, I mean, mostly an experience for me because, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of like a big fan, and honestly, my love for music kind of springs from. Blink 182 and you know that that the stuff that he wrote and uh it's just his thinking too is like I've I've read a bunch of interviews and I've seen like a bunch like I saw that um that documentary he did I forgot what it's called but I saw it on YouTube in parts aliens man. they're real no not it's not called aliens <laughs> I forgot what it was called man but I just seen kidding. that no you 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 truly are a fan you know all about Blink you are a big fan of AVA we you've seen them you've seen him in both bands i I, both of you like you guys truly know him and uh it was honestly an honor for me to just meet him yeah i've known him in blink i i've known him now in aba because of you guys and i got to see him twice which has been a pleasure Uh, i had a bad experience in one of them and he did not try to save me but it's okay i'll forgive him (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> all right guys but, i, I but. beg to differ but yeah <laughs> all right guys and before we continue with our rambling and stories we're gonna jump on to beer number three god damn it so before we jump into uh beer number three um let's give a rating for the beers we were drinking this round i was drinking the beer flavored beer <laughs> um and i liked it it was good smooth uh, i have no complaints it's good I feel like it wasn't strong enough as the first one. It's, it's not strong. It's a lager. But it's good. So I'm going to stick with my earlier pick, uh, earlier rating and going to give it a 3.75. How about you guys? Well, I had the Cerveza flavored beer. Uh, this is a 4.8 alcohol by volume. And I was coming from the sour. Uh, this one was definitely a lot more smoother. It's a lager. Uh, I did find it a little bit, hmm, on the stronger flavored side. I don't want to say it's as smooth. I think you said that the beer flavored beer is smoother, so I'm excited to try that as soon as we get it open. Um, I do want to give this a 3.5. I think it was just a good refreshing uh, taste, lager style, so typical like, you know, uh, Mexican style beer. Uh, I think it was pretty good. It is a little bit stronger than typical Mexican Mexican style beers. I should say that it's a 4.8 when typically you would see like a 4.0 or 4.5. I think it's really good, but I feel like these beers are more specific. Like it even says it on the can. Keep cold, enjoy fresh. And I feel like key to these beers are having them really, really cold because of the flavors that they have and that they offer uh i feel like if they were close to frozen would be really good um i guess that's it 
All right, what about you, Chris Guess? Well, I had the um, Cherry Limeade Slush. I don't think it was that bad, but I definitely would not recommend anybody to drink this shit. Um, not because it's bad or anything like that. Just <laughs> I was going to say, it wasn't that bad. Just because it's, like, really freaking bitter. And uh, it's a good, you know, you get a good uh, taste of cherry. Like, it tastes like what the cherry limeade would taste like without the sugar. You know, it's just extremely bitter. And um, as much as I like the taste of it, I don't think I'd recommend this to anybody. But to me, it's not that bad. So... I thought I was going to give it a 3.25, but I'm just going to give it a 3.0. And that's basically what I gave it. I feel like it is pretty good for a sour. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, I had worse sours, so I don't merit any. I don't merit it anything below a 3.0. All right. 3.0 is like literally the lowest I'd give it. All right. Let's do uh, Cracking Game Part 3. All right. Let's give it a taste of a... So now uh, I have the Cerveza, and I have the Cherry Limeade. And now mm. I have the beer-flavored beer. Good whiff, honestly. Very smooth. God damn. God damn. The beer-flavored damn. beer is definitely really, like, smooth. Like, it's not strong at all. And this is also a 4.8 alcohol by volume, as already previously mentioned. I'm just re-mentioning it. God damn, this sour is... Uh, what? Sour? Is goddamn. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> damn! <laughs> this beer-flavored beer is uniquely crafted, as it mentions. Oh, shit. Goddamn. <laughs> It's not that bad. We've had worse sours. To be no, I know. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm like, God it's a difference. Damn, I it's think, sour. I think we need a table of like uh, Flames Kids worst sours. <laughs> Fuck. It was that, just that last one though. Because that, that his his sour ratings are like off the charts in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> God, that is true. Man, I'm that's... pretty sure some negatives in there. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I don't know how I feel about this beer. Yeah, see, because it's a sour. He just flat. He blatantly just doesn't like sours. He doesn't. It, if it says sour, he ain't drinking it. He ain't picking it. Fuck, <laughs> he, I, no, he's drinking it. I but feel like I'm he fucking ain't picking possessed. It. What? Zest? No, possessed. Like oh, possessed. I want like the zest. I'm like, well, yeah, bro, it's limeade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I I don't know. I got mixed. I got really mixed feelings on this beer. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a sour guy, so take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's definitely not my cup of tea. Um, it's definitely not something I like. Man's loves exaggerating the sours. It's it's not good. I wouldn't say that. No, it's a sour. Like it's just probably not your taste. It's, I feel like I was more into sours back then, but it's acquired. It's an acquired taste. This sour is literally what it's supposed to taste like. Yeah, I don't cherry think limeade it's... sour. If you can imagine what that tastes like, that's exactly what this thing tastes like. And you know, you it's can't... just not sweet is the thing. And I think that's probably what's getting to him is he probably thought it would be a little bit sweet. That, that I mean, that's why he stopped drinking coffee altogether, right? Because he couldn't have any cream or sugar with it. Uh, I want to. I wouldn't say that, but yeah, he definitely has creamer. I don't put sugar in the coffee though. Yeah, well, I mean, the creamer you put in it already already comes, has sugar. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you can yeah, I, I, what I meant it. is I don't put additional sugar, uh, but okay. but yes, it it is just simply like sour yeah. versus having some sweetness to it that would make it a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah, but it's meant to be an exact sour, and that's what it is, and that's why I gave it the rating of three point zero because it might not be the best but considering i mean in as what far, it is as far as sours go that ain't the worst one i've had exactly it, it it's pretty good as a sour but it is definitely pretty sour yeah yeah is, is what i mean it i, I like yeah, it. yeah but goddamn that's, that's <laughs> sour but you also have to remember you've had two loggers before this which are definitely much smoother and both were 4.8 and this is a 5.5 that you are having 
Jesus Christ. God damn, I'm sorry. It's like having it's like that a serious, my guy. You're being dramatic. It's honestly not that no, serious. No, it's serious. Chris it had a better serious. reaction to it. Oh, and he is not Chris, a fan of sours. Oh, clearly he is because he didn't respond the same way I did. <laughs> You're being dramatic. You're being over dramatic. Lena, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? What a question. Honestly... What the twist? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been up to too much. I finestly, finest, Can I not Jeez. talk nah, this you, podcast? No, no. from yeah. the beginning, it's just been like bad. You know, Anyways. at this point, I don't even do it to be to be rude or funny or anything like that. At this point, I just do it because I want to. You know, the point is out there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm basically giving you a point. I think it was the third time. I think that's the third time you slurred your words. No, I think it's been more, to be honest. Really? Well, anyways, I counted three. That was the third time. <laughs> well, okay, if we'll I'm, go with three. If I'm, if I'm wrong, correct me or whatever. You know, keep no, you, please keep, don't. Keep your own track. No, 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 Rewind the whole episode and keep your own count. But as far as I know, that's like three. Yeah. I slurred even on my first beer. Um, I lost my train of thought. Chugga, yeah, guys. Okay. So, chugga, 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 so this chugga, new format chugga, is kind of killing us because, and not in a bad way, in, in in a good way. No, in a bad way because I am pretty buzzed, as you can tell. Yeah, me I mean, too. I started slurring in my first beer, but we are used to just reviewing one beer from each brewery. Yeah, and now we're having three, which. Lately, we've been picking beers that are not very low. I mean, these aren't so bad. 4.8. I think these are the lowest ones that we picked. Yeah. yeah last week was so much oh worse. My oh, my God. God. Poor cousin. She was with us, too. Um, oh, that was two weeks ago. Oh, that was two weeks ago. That was two weeks ago? Yep. Oh my God. Last week is when we said that was last week. Yeah. We mentioned well, it. Yeah, I mean. No, wait. Yeah, we mentioned yes. it on the last, last week episode. Was, last week was your pick, and we did that's Smog why. City, and that's when yeah. she was here. No, she wasn't. No, she wasn't. She wasn't here. Oh no, no. Lena's drunk. Go home. Can we just get your rating, and then you can like, I don't know, go to sleep. <laughs> Lena's sad now. She has a sad face. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all of a sudden, your your buzz went away. Now she's sad. I'm on the nerve side here. Please remember we cannot get the damn rest. To a show, to a party, but they're never asked to dance. The losers. The bastards. The the thieves. thieves, The cynicists. The pessimists. And those who don't believe in nothing. (laughs) Sorry, guys. We just (laughs) quoted a a song by a band called Street Light Manifesto. It's called The Moment of uh, Silence. No, but you just don't put this in the podcast at all. It's going to stay in the podcast. That's very awkward, man. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. And we can get copyrighted because we're singing the song. Eh, We're singing it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We don't. copyright. No, not if we're singing it. Not if it's our version. If we, I would have played it's that, still copyright because we took their. Nope, we took their intellectual property. Nah, like nope. that. Unless it's their them is singing it, it. Isn't that what happens with YouTubers? If they like even mention or sing like nope. in the melody of the song, like they nope. get copyrighted. Nope, they have to play the actual music. Oh, I apologize. Lena, Lena, what? How are you feeling? Be I'm honest. Under, I'm under the influence. I don't feel very well. At this point, I'm over how, the influence. How much of your beer flavor beer have you drink? I'm I'm pretty sure it's gone. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I think I've barely hit a dent in it. Look. There's still so much left to drink. And I have so Your entire week left. ahead of you, please explain. Yeah, you haven't spoken anything about your week yet. My week. I have mentioned something about my week. Well, we kind of already talked about it. In, in reality, Flames Kid Week. Well, didn't didn't you go to to Crystal Lights graduation? Well, I mean, that's what I was gonna say. Flames Kid, his week is essentially my week. We are one in one. Anyways, that was pretty lame. I guess I did go to Flames. <laughs> I did go to Matthias's uh, graduation. It was long and. I gotta be honest. That's what she said. 
Okay. <laughs> if she did say that, congrats. But <laughs> um, it was just kind of like speaker after speaker after speaker. I feel like everyone had a speech, and I feel like graduations um are more about speakers than actual graduates. Uh, like they get one second of saying like their name, having them get the diploma or whatever paper they're giving you, unless, and shaking their hand. Isn't that what every parent wants? Though? Well, unless you're the valedictorian or the salutatorian. Oh God, I have to mention the valedictorian. Not to say that what? it. Not to say that it was anything bad, but it got real. Like the the girl, she was uh talking about the unfortunate situation that happened in Texas about the shooting. Oh, where the kids got beamed, yeah. So she mentioned all of their names and talking about how she felt very unsafe to go to school. Because wait, 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 wait. She literally mentioned every single... Every single kid and adult, which was 19 kids and two adult, two or three adults. Okay. Um, She named them. She spoke a couple of details about their lives and she mentioned how she felt she felt unsafe and that she didn't know if her school would be next. Like, you, you just never know, to be completely honest. Okay, you were saying. I mean, technically, that is a real concern. No, no, no. I was with it. But I mean, like, it's a graduation where it was like, everyone's so proud of seeing their kid walk the stage. And I get that a lot of kids don't get to do that because of, of what happened did, yeah yeah exactly so i i totally get it but it was like a moment of like where the way she presented the speech was like real and yeah. it, and i could just see it like even myself i started to tear up because it's, it is it was so sad like i don't want to downplay anything and say like oh you know whatever it happened no it's really really messed up and like it's really hard to fix or to adjust certain things in like government to try to prevent these things because it's so controversial controversial <laughs> uh you know gun control it's so controversial and i don't want to get into that topic entirely but it just it's so hard to decide how things are going to be because everybody has that second amendment right and like it just becomes too much anyways um to not get into it too much but like it was it was hard because it's she's right like you never know what school it's gonna happen to what state it might occur in and how it might happen um this is why you keep it cool with everybody <laughs> i don't, don't want to say uh, that's not cool, gonna save your life entirely but uh i just feel like it just really sucks because lately you do see a lot in the news that you know there are shootings and all that stuff and so it, it was just it hit really real and it was pretty sad. She started crying and they had to like come help her and it was it was a lot. Um in Interesting. that time. Yeah, it was sorry, I have hiccups. <laughs> it was a moment. But uh it made me kind of appreciate the moment a lot more because I'm grateful to be able to be there um at my brother's graduation. And um yeah, like He's he's gonna go to high school and that makes me very sad because he's getting so much bigger. But uh <laughs> it uh it happens. It happens to all siblings. They all get older and wiser and smart assy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sounds about right. So it was nice to to celebrate him at Disneyland and <laughs> we took one of my mom's uh bestest friend's son. And he's a joy to be around. Oh, yeah. He's a huge he's a, joy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a huge pleasure. Uh, it was his first time there. So it was just really nice. But I have to say, Disney, your policies with taking pictures with characters, I'm not sure exactly how it works. They got to change, bro. I have to say, this <laughs> poor kid got in line twice and was denied the right to take a picture with his God Almighty hero of Goofy. And I felt so bad because his first time at Disneyland, both at Disneyland and California Adventures, was he not given the right to take a picture after take uh, after waiting in line? Not not only was he disrespected by not being able to take the picture, 
He was disrespected at both parts. <laughs> <laughs> and not I felt being able so to take bad. The, picture. the only thing he wanted was a picture with Goofy. Yeah. And I he told him, I even not asked get him, and it's just like, who do you want to take a picture with? Goofy. That's my guy. And I was and, just like, all right, for and sure, t- man. And tell me why at the end of the night. He wanted to beat up Goofy. <laughs> he was so upset. I mean, we calmed him down. He wasn't going to be any harm to anybody, of course. But he's he an, was he, so upset. He's officially a Goofy op. Yeah, let's just say he's probably not a fan anymore. So that's that's a 10 second fade in his hood, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what he called it. Yep. He Sounds said a, fade on sight, sir. Yep, it is oh, a fade on sight. Okay, well, but. Fade on sight in his <laughs> vicinity of the world yeah he just that's the only thing is he didn't get his picture with goofy but honestly that sucks man to be honest it, it really does but for you real. know we we got to go eat korean barbecue for his graduation which was his favorite um place to go eat uh it was a great experience it's really hard it's like a really bitter pill for me to swallow to know my little brother who i am 10 and a half years older than is going to high school and i can't re- just i can just recall moments in high school of situations i've been in and i'm like god he's gonna go through these things he probably will get a girlfriend and i'm i'm probably gonna end up in jail like to be completely honest uh let's hope not uh We're let's hope end up in jail <laughs> it happens to everyone maybe <laughs> hopefully let's not. just hope i can keep my cool but uh, he's just growing up so fast and it's really, really hard for me to process. Um, but yeah, he's, he's getting older and he thinks he's cool and funny, but he's not, not killer. He's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Kids got me beat sometimes. <laughs> he was, he was a good kid and I'm proud of him. Um, but yeah, it's just, it was just a hard week for me to process all of that. And, um, I am planning and waiting on a specific class to get a certification and hopefully get back to work right now. I am done with my prereqs for registering and or applying to certain programs uh, for my career and uh, been starting on like the essays and uh, looking for who I'm going to recommend for letters of recommendation or is that the right way to say it? Who I'm going to ask for letters of recommendation from there you go yeah there you go that's a cleaner way to say it um and it looks like hopefully things are falling into place after so long of waiting so we'll see how things go i hope for the best and i guess that's all my week honestly not so much more all right well you know thank you very much for uh that uh, exquisite uh, story about you are so very welcome, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that being said, um, we're gonna give our final ratings on these beers that we're drinking. Um, I don't like it. I don't like the cherry light made. I'm sorry. I don't like it. It is good. I don't like it. Hmm. Nope. I don't like it. It's not good. Every time I drink the beer, there's a. I, I taste the cherry limeade in my mouth, but it's not, it's just not it. It's not, it's not, it's not the bee's knees. So for me, it's going to get a 2.0. Really? Yep. 2.0. How about you guys? Damn. Well, that sounds I'm, really personal to be completely honest. I mean, before we go on, for me, kid, are these, is, are these the headphones that you ordered? <laughs> no, those are the beats. <laughs> Are they? Yeah. Oh, shit, you're right. I thought I had a fucking What did it say? Here. What does it say? I hear. Me stopping the song to see if the siren is in the song or it's outside. <laughs> I've done is that. that. Funny no, 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 no. The funny, funny thing is, is, I used to live in LA and I would have had to do that. If if uh, I was watching a movie and like a siren comes on, I would pause it to see if it was real life or not. Because funny story, really quick, I'll mention. Um, my family in 2002 moved to Watts, California. And the day we were moving in, taking off all the like boards off the windows and, and uh, all that stuff, all the kid, I was a kid. Like I was, I, I assume you had to put all that shit right back. Why? No, 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 not the bars. Like there was literally wood on the windows. There were bars as well, but because I guess it wasn't occupied for quite a while, they put like wood so that people wouldn't break in. 
So we were removing all of that. Why does the neighbor's house get raided with SWAT and everything? So because they're raiding the house next door, they come into our property that we had just the first day moved into. And the kids, which was me included at the time, 2002, we were forced to get on the floor with ice creams that we just bought from the um, truck that passed by. The real question is, did you guys lick those ice creams while you were on the floor? Well, I mean, it, I don't want to. It didn't touch the floor, so yeah, we were still eating it, but they were melting. While you, got, while you guys were on the floor, where you were, you were eating. We all were the laying ice down on our tummies, yeah. and the ice cream was above the ground, uh-huh. and we were still kind of eating it. Well, I mean, it was melting. It was a very terrifying moment, I have to say, because it's our first day there. We're kids. I think I was what, like that was two thousand two. That I was probably like six, seven years old at the time. I don't know. I, re- I don't remember what year. The, I mean, what month this was in the year. So I was maybe like five, six years old or maybe even seven. I don't know. Respect. So like all this is going down and like the swatching comes in. And not only is it like uh, police, it they have guns, like big guns. Some have dogs because I guess I, I don't want to like speculate, but thinking now as an adult. I want to say maybe they were like dealing something. I don't know. But um, it was like a very terrifying moment. And uh, yeah, it it just, I forgot my point. But that was an interesting moment. So your beer rating. Yeah, what's your beer rating? Is that what my point was? I don't know. (laughs) Was it? I want to give my beer rating... A, you know what? I'm gonna stick to the three point seven five. This one is really, really light, really, really smooth, and it's a lager. Uh, it's a little bit stronger than typical lagers as a four point eight when they're typically four point zero, four point five. Uh, it's definitely just really light and really smooth to drink. I would definitely recommend it to many others and. I like it. I really like it. All right. What about you, Chris Cass? So I had the um, Cerveza flavored beer. I gave the sour a 3.0 and I gave the beer flavored beer, I believe, a 3.75, if I am not mistaken. Uh, So this one, I got to give it in between maybe like a... I feel like a 3.25 is too low, so I'm just going to give it a 3.5. It tastes like a cerveza. It has that, um, I mean, from, for most of those cervezas that you taste or, you know, lagers, they have like that bitter taste in the beginning. And, um, that's kind of like the, the deal stealer for me, I guess, you know, like it just. It's a deal breaker. That's what I meant to say. Okay. The deal breaker. Uh, just that bitterness in, in the in the first, you know, couple seconds that it hits your taste buds. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to give it with a 3.5, right? Yeah. So um, with those being our hoppy ratings for each beer, I've already tallied them up. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and for the cerveza, we got an average of... 3.58, which we rounded up to 3.75. For the beer flavor beer, uh, we got an average of 3.75. And for the cherry limeade, <laughs> we got an average of a 2.66 or uh, rounded up 2.75. Hmm, I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, so, um, overall, um, I'm very glad that we got to try a Wiley Roots Brewing Company. Yeah. Um, it's nothing on their end. Uh, I think that the the sour was just not to our tasting buds. Um, uh, maybe somebody will like it. Um, but as far as like the beer flavor beer and the cerveza flavor beer, I think those are probably the best selling beers. Um, I think they have a higher chance of uh, becoming bigger beers. Mm-hmm. 
I think we just need somebody with a sour palate on this podcast. Yeah. I mean, that usually was me, but I think I'm losing touch. Oh, boy. Oh. This will not do. This will not do. So, guys, with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and bid you guys adieu. We hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Uh, we go. We hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this new format as well. And we hope that you guys have enjoyed um, our rantings about our random uh, adventures and uh, topics that we have come across over these uh, over each episode. So I'm gonna bid you adieu. I've been Flameskid. I've been Lena. And I've been Chris Cass. And we're gonna say good night. Don't drink and drive. Be respectful and responsible when under the influence. That's your government warning here. That's your government warning. (laughs) All right, guys. Good night.